Where was it, uh, what happened, uh, and what year was it in your most memorable race, one that stands out in your mind uh, over all of win, loss, whatever? Oh, I guess Richmond, uh, the NASCAR Craftsman uh, win at Richmond in 97 would probably be the most uh, exciting and popular and, and went on and on for days and weeks afterwards. Uh, the neat thing about that race also is we didn't have a race the following week, so I got to celebrate it for two weeks before you become a loser again. <laughs> because uh, you're only a winner till your next race, and if you lose that one, everybody forgets about that. You know, if you win again, well, then it, it keeps you going. But uh, We got to enjoy that for a couple of weeks and uh, a lot of talk shows, and uh, it was pretty neat. You know. Where was it? What happened? And what year was it in your most uh, in your worst wreck? I guess my, my if I'm thinking Texas, it's a dumb question, but <laughs> maybe you can uh, talk about it a little bit. Texas was probably one of the most devastating wrecks, I guess. I mean that that wreck in '78 pretty much cleaned me right out. I didn't have anything to race anymore. Um, hurt myself a little bit, not too bad. I hurt. Uh, a neck a little bit and my and, uh, ankle. I mean, not too bad. Could have been worse. Uh, Was that your worst? Probably. Um, Maybe that or Indian 94. Nah, probably the Texas race was probably the worst. And it, it, like I say, it wasn't all that bad as a driver. I mean, I didn't get hospitalized or anything, but it, it hurt in more ways. I mean, it financially put me out of business, and what do I do now? <laughs> and, uh, you know, kind of set me back at quite a ways uh, and to top it off you're limping around for a few weeks <laughs> and that was what year? 78 1978 do you have any heroes you, uh, currently or, or or did you have any before do you still have any heroes today oh joy fair has always been my hero from never always has and always will be um, he's the kind of guy I, I i would put myself in that same category that joy did everything himself he didn't rely on anybody building him anything, and uh, he learned every aspect of the car, and then took it to track and actually drove it. You know, he's my hero. He, I know what he had to operate with and uh, how he did it. I mean, uh, he he did it the same way I do things, and uh, that's probably why we're pretty good friends today. He knows that it wasn't given to me, and I know what he had to do to get where he's at. And uh, but he was my hero even when I was a little kid watching him. Uh, at Dixie Speedway in the 50s. I mean, he was uh, a constant winner, and uh, uh, I don't know if there will ever be another Joy Fair. And, you know, pretty neat guy, too. He's pretty humble. It's uh, my kind of guy. He's not tooting his horn how great he is. He's just pretty humble and pretty down-to-earth guy. You know. Even though the cars weren't pretty. <laughs>
there probably wouldn't be much uh, stock car racing for sure without him. And uh, um, he pushed on people that they get get racing uh, as popular as it was and get the manufacturers involved, and that escalated from there to where the car builders and and all the little aftermarket companies that are building parts, and I, I think it all starts with what he did back in the 40s. Uh, yeah. Who was your toughest competitor? Probably the toughest guy I had to race against. It, it deflated me the most, let's put it that way, was Junior Hanley. That guy just dominated every time he come. When Junior pulled in the gate, you know, you, you ain't going to win tonight. <laughs> he, he could interpret the rules and stretch the rules like nobody in this world could do it. But, and, man, he just, if he showed up, you, you're probably going to like, you know, say you're probably going to be second. <laughs> when I went ARCA racing, I felt like every time we went there, we had a chance to, uh, yeah, I didn't care who showed up. I, I had a pretty good chance of winning that day. Or, but when uh, when Junior came to the short tracks at Toledo or Mount Clemens or Windsor, you you were whipped. <laughs> good thing he didn't go arc racing, huh? Do you have a favorite track? Um, no, not really. I mean, I mean, I was pretty successful at Pocono. I wouldn't mind going back there. I like the Michigan Speedway one there, but uh, no, I, I really don't have a preference. Um, I have a few least favorite tracks, but <laughs> that's about. Uh, that's the next question. What's what's a track that's giving you the most fits, or that that you maybe had trouble setting up for, or whatever, or, or something like that? Well, the track that's given me the most problem, I actually run pretty good at, is I-70. That thing has cost me three race cars, and it just, uh, the only time I've ever flipped a race car over, I flipped one over there, crashed and burned, literally crashed and burned, on fire, destroyed that truck, come back the next year and running for, running top five, running real good, and I got off an apron on the water where it rained and turned around, backed in the fence, beat a truck to death. Come back the next year, and we're running real good, and uh, uh, Mike Wallace loses his brakes, I guess, and runs all over the factory and destroys that drive. Jeez, I'll pay to me. And uh, it's a difficult track. It's not a very good racetrack, I, I consider it. Do you have any hobbies other than the racing? No, not really. At one time, I did snowmobile. Um, my wife and I bowled together on a mixed league uh, for quite a few years, but uh, now in the last 10 years, I just ain't had any time. Uh, if there was any time, I guess if there is what you'd call a hobby, it'd be taking my son quarter midget racing and stuff like that. I guess it's kind of a hobby because you, you're not racing for money. It's more of a fun thing. So if I did any, any time, that's what would be my free time, I guess. Uh, Growing up, is, is this where you dreamed you'd be? Is this, uh, A, is it where you dreamed you'd be? And B, is this where you where you've tried to position yourself? Awful close. Awful close. Uh, if you set your goals at the highest, you know, when you're young, and uh, uh, we set them on Winston Cup. Yeah, long, I mean, way before Winston Cup was cool. <laughs> this is what we wanted to do in the 60s and 70s. Uh, and we got we got pretty close. Uh, the truck series is, you know, not Winston Cup, but it's probably only one step away. Uh, maybe maybe it's behind Bush, but not much. Uh, it, it's about the close you're going to get to Winston Cup, uh, and the exposure and the publicity and the fame. And I mean, uh, our equipment, our our shop, our facility work out of is Winston Cup level. Our haulers are Winston Cup level. Our tooling, I mean, it, it's so close. It's you're just about there. If you could change anything about your sport, good or bad, would you change anything, and what would it be? Well, I've always thought that the drivers and owners should have had a little more to say with what the sanctioned bodies do. Uh, 
you know, back in the in the late sixties, they had a drivers association that got broke up over at the Talladega thing, and uh, here it is, almost forty years later, and there's still no association. It's I don't really care much for unions and trying to tell a sanctioned body what they're going to do and how they're going to do it every minute, but you'd like to think you'd have some say in it because this is your career. This is they're controlling your life. Uh, and you like to think you have some say in, well, you know, we think we want to run Japan next week. Well, you know, don't you think that you ought to at least consult your people? Or, you know, but you don't. You don't have any say in that. Mm-hmm. Well, then reason, not not to be as tough as a union would be at a automotive plant where they dictate everything, but at least have some say in it. And uh, where you're going, and you know NASCAR is in a great job. He sure can. I mean, they made the sport what it is, and made a big sport out of it. But, uh, but at the same token, this is what you know. You're committed to them. You, you put all your eggs in one basket. This is what you're going to do. You got a team. You got sponsorship. You're building trucks, building cars, whatever. And yet you have literally no say in it. You know? So if I can change anything. I don't mind at least having a say in what we're, what we might do next.